Hey guys, I've been doing Telegram videos for a while now, and this video that you're about to watch is a collection of all of my Telegram videos over the past couple months. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you go to Telegram and subscribe to my channel because you'll get free videos every single day. That's right, every day, right there on your phone, right in your pocket, a new video about English. And they're not very long, they're a maximum of 60 seconds, so just go and subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, make sure you do that too because there's a lot of great free videos every single day on my YouTube channel as well. Guys, there is so much material and so many resources that really you could study for years and years just with my free content. So go there, subscribe now. The name of the Telegram channel is Get Motivated with Chris. And if you can't find it, there will be a link below this video. All right, see you then. Hey guys, today I wanna to tell you about making changes. There's a couple different phrases we often use to talk about changes. We can say to switch it up, and this just means to do something different. It doesn't tell us exactly what we're changing or what we're doing differently, just switching it up. Another thing we can do is change the scenery. We might say, I need a change of scenery. This means I need to go to a new place. I need to go do something different or try something new. So if you need a change of scenery, Go check out my YouTube videos because I release videos every single day on this channel on Telegram and on my YouTube channel. Just search for English with Chris Americos. Probably know that to move means to do something with your body. But today, I'm moving houses. That means that I'm going to travel to a new house, move all of my things there, take them with me, put them in this new house, and that will be my new house. We can also use this phrase to move when we say to move offices, which means that you change offices, you have a new one, and that's where you will work from now on. But usually we don't say move houses or move offices, we just say, I'm moving. Hey guys, have you ever had the problem that your phone doesn't have enough power or enough energy? You can't use it because it just stops working. You need to charge your phone. and. When your phone becomes completely uncharged, we say, my phone died. Yeah, we can say to die about our phone, and this means that it doesn't have any battery power. You can say the battery died, or you can say my phone died. Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you about the phrase to be in the zone. When someone says, I'm in the zone, or he's in the zone, or I need to get in the zone. This means I need to focus, or I need to be able to do something very effectively every time. Every time that I try, I do it correctly. That means that I'm in the zone. Uh, we might say this about sports. For example, a basketball player, he makes lots of shots, he makes lots of baskets. Every time he throws the ball, he scores points. We can say he's in the zone. Or maybe we are concentrating very, very strongly on something. And we can say, I'm in the zone right now. Don't bother me or don't distract me. So this phrase has a lot of different meanings. Hey guys, so continuing our discussion about sounds, we're going to talk a little bit about why it's difficult to understand some people. You know, like American people and British people, when they say numbers, it sounds a little bit different. So a British person might say 20, an American person says 20. Yeah, 20, money, 20, right. And a British person might say 30, an American person says 30, 30. We can say 50, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100 or 100. So notice this difference because this is a difference in the pronunciation of the T sound. And in English, we change the sound a lot. Let's talk a little bit about school. At school, when you come into the classroom and at the beginning of the lesson, the teacher might take something called a roll call. Yeah, we say to take a roll call. And this means that the teacher says people's names and asks who's here and who's not here. But we don't say here and not here. Instead, 
we say present or absent. So when you're taking a roll call or when someone else is taking a roll call, you should say present or absent. Present means here, absent means not here. Hey guys, it's been a couple days and I don't want you to think I forgot about you. But today I'm gonna to tell you about some phrases that we can use when we're trying to keep our contact with someone. We can say to keep in touch. This means to hold your communication, to continue your communication, not to lose a person. So you're always talking to each other and you know what's happening. Keep in touch. Another thing that you can say is get in touch. Get in touch means that you contact someone. So, for example, if you need help with English, get in touch with me. After we talk, we will keep in touch. It means we'll, keep, we'll continue to talk. How often do you smile? You should smile a little more often. Too many people have frowns. A frown is a sad face. It's the opposite of a smile. Make sure this week you have a smile on your face all week long. No need to frown. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And I couldn't agree more since I'm a morning person. Yeah, I'm an early bird. I like to wake up early and get my work done fast. That way in the evening I can relax. And doctors say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. For me, it's absolutely true. I wake up, I eat my breakfast, and then I'm ready to go. If I had a full breakfast, if I had a great breakfast, then I know my day is gonna be great. One of my favorite words is the word bear. Not the animal bear, but the adjective bear. You might not know this word. It's spelled B-A-R-E, bear. And it's pronounced the same as the animal. But this adjective, bear, means something completely different. It means naked or without any protection or without any cover. So for example, we can say barefoot. This means without shoes or without socks. We can say he touched the hot iron with his bare hands. This means without gloves or without protection. He burned himself. So. Next time you hear the word bear, make sure you don't confuse the adjective with the animal. Guys, let's talk about the word flip. Now you might know this word, you might not know this word. This word has a lot of different meanings. First of all, flip is when someone jumps but they turn over. So they maybe are standing on their feet and they jump and they turn in a circle and then they land on their feet. This is called a flip. Or maybe they uh, do this circle backwards and this is called a back flip. When they do it forwards, it's called a front flip or a forward flip. But flip has other meanings too. Flip might be when you spin something in a circle in the same way, but it might not be yourself. For example, to flip a pancake or to flip a hamburger. And flip could also be to get very angry or to have a very strong emotional reaction. We could say, when he saw the dirty house, he flipped. Or we could say, he flipped out. Flip is a very cool word, so now you can use it in your vocabulary. One of the best ways to learn a language is to trick yourself into learning it. Now what do I mean by trick yourself into learning a language? I mean, create a daily routine that requires you to use this language in some way. So maybe that means that you're going to check a forum or a Facebook group every single day and you're going to read what people write there. And then sometimes you're going to write your responses or answers back to them. This is really, really good practice because people usually write in these groups and forums in a conversational style of English. And when you answer them, they're going to judge your answer. And when they write you back, you can see if they think what you wrote is strange or doesn't make sense to them, or if it sounds okay to them. This is a really good way to get free feedback. One of the best parts of Saturday morning is finding out what happened Friday evening. 
Hey guys, you probably know the word sofa. It's a comfortable place to sit. Sometimes maybe even lay and take a nap. But there are other words for things that are similar to sofas. For example, the word couch. Couch, sofa, it's basically the same thing. But sometimes we also use other words. For example, love seat. A love seat is a small couch or a small sofa with two seats. Hmm, I wonder why they call it a love seat. So you might know the word beard or mustache, but altogether, any hair that's on the face, we can call facial hair. So we might say, he has facial hair, or I shave because I can't have facial hair at work. So next time when you want to ask someone about a beard or a mustache, try to use this term instead. Hey guys, today I want to share with you two of my favorite phrases about sleep. We can say, to catch some Z's, or we can say, to get some shut eye. Both of these phrases mean to get sleep or to sleep. When you're speaking English, you should avoid phrases like what it means. Instead, we need to ask a proper, correct question. What does it mean? What does this mean? Or you can even say, what's that? Instead of saying this long sentence, what does that mean? Just say, what's that? It's more natural. Also, avoid using the phrase, could you please tell me, before you ask a question. Instead, just ask the question. Use correct question form, question structure, but you don't need to announce it. You don't need to say, could you please answer this question? Just ask the question. Hey guys, today I want to tell you a few words about laughing. Ha 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 ha. So there are some different words that we can use instead of using the word laugh all the time. One of these words is to giggle. <laughs> Which is something like to laugh like a little girl. We can also say to cackle. <laughs> it's something like to laugh like a witch. And there are some other phrases that we might use too, like to burst out laughing, which means we try not to laugh and then we explode with laughter like <laughs> And there are a lot of other phrases too. For example, we could say to crack up. This means to laugh or to think that something is funny. Hey guys, happy September 1st. In some places, September 1st is considered the first day of school. In some places, the 1st of September is considered the first day of fall or autumn. And in some places, the 1st of September is considered a holiday. So if you are from a place that considers the 1st of September a holiday, happy 1st of September. Hey guys, today I'm gonna to tell you about a phrase that I love because it's 100% true. This phrase is, practice makes perfect. We don't say practice makes it perfect or practice makes everything perfect. We just say practice makes perfect. And I think that this is true because when you practice something, you get better and better at it. Sure, nothing's perfect and nobody's perfect, but if you practice enough, you can get pretty close. Hey guys, let me ask you a question. How often do you eat out? Eat out means when you don't eat at home. When you eat at home, we can say that you eat in. So what about you? Do you eat out more or do you eat in more? Hey guys, today I wanna to tell you a little bit about birthdays because today is my birthday. And there's a phrase about birthdays that we have in English that might be a little bit confusing. It's called over the hill. If you say that somebody is over the hill, it means that they are past their prime time in their life. It means all the best moments are over. They're officially old. We can say, he's over the hill. And we might make this joke when someone has a birthday as they get a little bit older. Some people only use this phrase to describe when someone turns 40 years old. But other people might use it differently. Are you over the hill? 
Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you about extreme weather because there's a hurricane coming my direction right now. That means that I need to evacuate. So I'm leaving the state of Florida and I'm going to Virginia. Now, what are some other extreme types of weather that often occur? In the United States, there's a lot of tornadoes. There's also a lot of thunderstorms, although they're not very extreme. Floods also happen. And in Southeast Asia, they have monsoon, or lots and lots of rain for months and months sometimes. What other kinds of extreme weather can you think of? Oh, there's earthquakes. And when I lived in Russia, there was even a meteorite that fell out of the sky. So I guess it doesn't really matter where you go. Weather can always play tricks on you. Hey guys, sorry there haven't been any updates recently. Let me tell you a little bit about what's been going on. If you don't already know, there was a huge hurricane that went through Florida in the United States. And I decided to leave Florida and to avoid all stress and chaos connected to this hurricane. So while I was on the road and while I was away from my home, I decided that I wouldn't be doing updates because I didn't know how reliable my internet connection was and because I was dealing with a crisis. So now I'm back, everything is okay, I had no damage to my house or property or belongings, and I'm back in a stable place, back to work, and I'm happy to be back with you guys. Hey guys, today I want to talk about the ending or suffix ER. Now, this suffix actually has several different meanings, two that I can think of right now. One of them is when we want to talk about a person, right? We can say singer or a winner, and these words have ER at the end. It means the person who does this thing. So a winner, a person who wins, a singer, a person who sings. But ER can also be used to talk about comparing two things, right? Bigger, smaller. So we have two objects and we say that one has more or less of a quality than another. But we can also use ER to talk about objects that do an action. For example, drink holder or TV controller. So in this case, it's a verb that shows that something does something. Let's talk a little bit about prefixes. Over and under. There's a verb to estimate which basically means to guess a little bit and to measure a little bit. And if we say to overestimate, this means that we think something is better than what it really is. If we say underestimate, it means that we think that something isn't as good as it really is. The only thing constant in this world is change. Hey guys, let's talk a little bit about the prefix re, R E. Now, a lot of people think that this prefix only means again. For example, to redo something means to do it again. Or replay, play again. Or retry, try again. But re also has a different meaning. Re, as a prefix, also means backwards. Yeah, we can say to rewind. To wind means to move something in a circle around another thing. And rewind means to move it backwards or the opposite direction. We can also say reverse, which means to move backwards in the opposite direction. You might have seen this R symbol in your car. If you put your car in reverse, your car will go backwards. All right, let's review the rule about adverbs of frequency. What are adverbs of frequency, you might ask? Well, they're words like always, never, sometimes, usually, rarely, seldom. And when we use these words, we have a special rule. Like 99% of the time, we need to follow this rule because it works. So if we want to say, for example, I always go to the supermarket, we need to put the word always before the verb. So, before the word go, I always go. Only if the verb is the verb to be, 
should we put the adverb after the verb? So, for example, I am always awake early in the morning, but I always go to the supermarket. See the rule? What's your morning routine? When you wake up, what do you do? Do you do the same things every single day, or do you do different things? When we talk about a routine, or what we usually do in a day or any time period, we use present simple to talk about this. So we can say, every day I get up, I brush my teeth, I eat breakfast, I get dressed, I go to work. And if we talk about a routine in the past, then we say, first I got up, I brushed my teeth, I ate breakfast, I got dressed, I went to work. We always use simple. Hey guys, almost forgot to do this today. Well, today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about uh, how much time you need to spend learning a language each day to do it successfully. For me, a foreign language that I'm learning is Russian. I've been learning it for a long time, about eight years or more now, and I can say that I study Russian or at least use Russian in some way every single day. I at least go to a website or a forum or somewhere where people are speaking Russian and I use Russian. I practice writing it or speaking it and I have to say that you know I have motivation inside me to do this every single day and that's what you need to find. You need to find that motivation inside of you that pushes you to use English every single day. Now I said I'd tell you how much you need to study. Every day is ideal but just do it as much as you can. As different industries around the world expand and grow and become faster in their development, English becomes more and more necessary. Just think about how many times you go to a website and they have bad English, or if you go to a restaurant and they have bad English, what does that say to people? It says that you couldn't take the time to do it right, or you couldn't take the time to find someone who could do it right. So. When you're studying English, remember that this is something that you're going to be able to use everywhere. And when you do it correctly, people understand and people respect the fact that it's correct. When you do it incorrectly, people can laugh, people can joke, and sure, we have to make some mistakes in order for us to grow. But the most important thing to remember is if we keep trying and we always try to do what's right and correct, we're going to succeed. Hey guys, today I'm going to share a tongue twister with you. If you don't know what it is, a tongue twister is a difficult phrase to say. Usually people say them really fast and they usually make mistakes when they say them. So here is one of the classic, one of the most popular tongue twisters in English. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Did you get that? I'll say it again. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? And this tongue twister has an answer. We could say, a woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. You got that? Listen to it again if you didn't. Hey guys, just a quick update. I wanted to remind you that if you want to learn phrasal verbs, I release a phrasal verb video every single day on my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, and you can search for English with Chris and Mary Kose, and you'll find my channel. You can also search for daily phrasal verbs, and you'll find it. Also, there's a lot of useful material that you can find on my website, english.chrisandmarycose.com. Thanks for watching. Let's not forget that pronunciation changes from country to country and even from region to region within English speaking countries. So in some places people might use a specific word and in another area someone might not use that word or they might use a different word. They might also pronounce the same word differently. One of these examples is the word address or address. In American English when this word is a noun it's usually pronounced address whereas in British English it's usually usually pronounced address. However, both American and British English pronounce the verb to address. So as you can see, it can be a little confusing. What would you do if? This is the beginning 
of a hypothetical question in English. That's right, it's called a hypothetical question. And we can say, what would you do if, and then use the past tense, usually past simple, to ask a question about a situation that's not real. So I can say, what would you do if you won a million dollars? Or what would you do if you saw a dinosaur? Or what would you do if a bear was attacking you? So you see, there are a lot of makeup or unreal or hypothetical situations that we can talk about using this phrase. What would you do if? How many or how much? When can we say them? What's the rule? I know, it's confusing. Sometimes we make mistakes and we say how much when we should say how many or how many when we should say how much. What's the rule? It's actually really simple, guys. There's something called countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Basically, things that we can count and things we can't count. Now, I know, you're probably thinking, well, we can count pretty much anything, right? Yes, but not in grammar. So in grammar, there are special words or things called nouns that we can count or we can't count. If we can count them, then we use how many. If we can't count them, then we use how much. So for example, if I say chair, we can count chairs, so how many chairs? But if I say water, we say how much water? Can't count it. Hey guys, I'm here with another update for you on our Telegram channel, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, this past Tuesday, I actually had a live video on Facebook where I talked about education in the United States. Next Tuesday, I'm also going to be doing a live video on Facebook. So make sure that you tune in for that. Uh, it's going to be at 5.30 p.m. Moscow time. So make sure you check that out. You can find it on my Facebook page. Uh, I will also be doing a live video on VK tomorrow, Thursday. And that video will be completely in Russian with explanations of English in Russian. So I'm going to try. Hopefully I don't make too many mistakes. <laughs> hey guys, in two hours I'm going to have a live video on Vkontakte. If you speak Russian, then you can join us and you can listen to my talk there because my talk will be about English, but it will be in Russian. And one of the things that we're going to talk about in the video today is comparing the words who and what. Now, when we use who, we're talking about how one person is different from other people. And when we say what, we're talking about a category of things or just anything. When we talk about a thing, we use what. When we talk about a person and specifically how a person is different from other people, we use who. I know that can be confusing. Hey guys, first of all, I want to say hi to all the new members of this Telegram channel. I think you're really going to like the content here. Second of all, I want to tell you about future time phrases or future time clauses. After some words or phrases, we don't usually use the future in English, so we don't say will. Instead, we use present, and everybody understands that we're talking about the future. Some of these words and phrases are if, when, before, after, as, while, as soon as, as long as, until, unless, and in case. So remember, after all of these words and phrases, we don't say future, we say present to talk about the future. So we would say, I'll tell you when I see you, not I'll tell you when I will see you. We don't say that. We say, I will tell you when I see you. We use present to talk about future. Hey guys, today I want to tell you a little bit about the word light and in general how we can use this in English because a lot of times we use light and not having light to talk about intelligence. So we could say to be enlightened, which means that you know some special information. You are intelligent. You are knowledgeable. We could also say that someone is dim. This is the same word that we use when we don't have light or we have very weak light. 
So if we say someone is dim, it means he's not very smart. We could also say to brighten up someone's day. And if we brighten up someone's day, it means that we make them feel positive. A lot of people get confused when someone asks them, what are you doing tonight? They might say, sleeping, of course. But that's only what non-English speakers say. If you speak English, you know that when someone asks, what are you doing tonight? They're asking about the evening. It's probably because in English, the word night has several different meanings. First of all, if we separate 24 hours into two parts, we have day and night. So night really means the dark part of the day. If we separate 24 hours into four parts, then we have morning, afternoon, evening, and night. So again, we can see that night means the last part of the day or the fourth part. So this is when we go to sleep or this is when it's dark outside. Usually in the evening, it's also dark outside. So a lot of people will ask, what are you doing tonight? And they mean, what are you doing this evening? Hey guys, when do we use what and when do we use which? Well, we can use which when we have a limited number of things that we're talking about. So for example, which flavor of ice cream do you like? Chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry? Because we only have three options, we can say which. However, if I gave you an unlimited number of options, then I would say what. For example, what flavor of ice cream do you like? Both of these questions are correct, and it just depends on if we have a limited or unlimited number of options. Hey guys, I just want to tell you about a word that people often confuse when they go to stay at hotels around the world. There's a word in English that's spelled S-U-I-T-E. And this word is pronounced sweet. Not suit, sweet. Suit is spelled S-U-I-T. But sweet is spelled S-U-I-T-E. Yeah, I know. It sounds like the word sweet, like a kind of food that you might eat that has a lot of sugar. That's spelled S-W-E-E-T. But this suite is a special hotel room, usually a very nice, very big hotel room. And it's spelled S-U-I-T-E. So next time you go to a hotel, ask for a suite, not a suit. Hey guys, if you like getting a video every single day, then you need to check out my YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed there, make sure you do that. And you'll get a video every day. I release a video every single day about phrasal verbs. And if you go to my channel, you'll get the videos every day too. So I'm gonna send you the link in a message right after this one. And make sure you click it, go there, subscribe, and check out my videos. Every day. Every day. Sometimes I hear mistakes like when someone says, this night. We never say this night. We say tonight if we're talking about the night that will happen during this day, this 24-hour period. We say tonight. If we're talking about yesterday, we say last night. And if we're talking about tomorrow, we say tomorrow night. It works the same when we talk about evenings, mornings. We can say this morning, that's today. Yesterday morning, yesterday, and tomorrow morning. So we want to remember to say today, this evening, tonight, this morning, and this afternoon when we're talking about today. Hey guys, I want to tell you a little bit about the words wait, expect, and look forward to. Well, when we say wait, we're usually talking about sitting in one place and doing nothing. That's right, we're not moving around, we're not going to different places, we're not walking, we're not doing anything, we're just waiting. If we say expect, it means that we have a plan and we behave like we have a plan and we make our uh, day organized in the way that we have a plan. So, for example, um, I expect that my student will be online at 8 o'clock. This means I have a plan and I behave like I have a plan. 
at eight o'clock my student's not there, I can say, I'm waiting for my student. Now, look forward to means that we really want something to happen. We're excited about it. We're happy about it. So maybe we can say, my student is looking forward to our lesson. One of my favorite English words is the word reminisce. It's a verb, to reminisce, and it means that we think about something that happened in the past with pleasure. Hey guys, I just want to make an announcement really quick. Thank you so much for joining this Telegram channel. Now there are over 200 subscribers to this channel, and I have to say a big thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Hey guys, as you know, motivation is probably the most important thing when we're learning a language or any other skill. And today I wanted to share a couple other words that are very similar to motivation and are also very important. These words are drive and determination. So they're very similar to motivation, but drive is kind of that energy that pushes you forward, that makes you want to do something. And determination is the energy to continue trying. So we might have motivation one day to do something, but we need determination to do it again and again long term and to keep working on it. And we need drive to help push us forward and make sure that we get progress. Hey guys, today I want to tell you about a game that we have in the United States. People usually play it at high school, maybe at university, but the game is called Never Have I Ever. So you can imagine that playing this game is great practice for learning the present perfect tense. You say something that you've never done, and if other people have done this thing, they lose a point or they need to take a drink. It depends on what kind of game you're playing. But uh, the point is that we say, never have I ever, for example, been to France. Well, I have been to France, so I lose a point. So we can say different things like this. In general, to practice present perfect, we need to use have and the third form of the verb. So we can say, I have been to France, or I have never been to France. What about you? Have you been to France? Hey guys, today I want to tell you about an idiom, or a special phrase in English that has a special meaning. This idiom is dress for success. And it means you should always look your best if you want to be successful. Now, some people don't agree with this saying or with this idiom. And if you agree with this, then maybe you can reach out to me and let me know. How do you think you can dress for success? If you guys don't know how to reach out to me, by the way, you can always find me on Facebook or on VK. Uh, if you search on Google for Chris Americos, then you should find me. You can go to my website, chrisamericos.com. And, you know, because we're learning English, you can also go to my English website, english.chrisamericos.com. Thanks, guys. Oops! I almost forgot to make a video today. And today I'm going to make a video about oops. And not only about oops, but also about other words and phrases. Like, ouch, and uh-oh. Well, oops is what we say when we make a mistake. And uh-oh is what we say when we think that something negative is about to happen. Or maybe something that's unplanned. Or maybe something that is going to tell us that we made the wrong decision. Uh, and when we say, ouch, this is what we say when we're in pain or something hurts. And these are three really great words and sounds to know. Oops, ouch, and uh-oh. Hey guys, today I want to tell you about two words that some people think are synonyms, but sometimes they're a little bit different. These two words are smell and stink. First of all, smell is when something has, well, a smell. We can, ugh, maybe we smell something, 
but we can also say that that thing smells. Usually, when we say that something smells, it means it has a bad smell. It's negative. And when we say something stinks, it always has a bad smell or a very, very strong smell. But when we say that something stinks, it might also mean that this thing is bad quality. We could say, my camera stinks. The photos are terrible quality. We cannot say my camera smells. Well, we can if we can smell the camera. <laughs> Morning is my favorite time of the day. They call me an early bird. A person who likes the morning and goes to bed early in the evening and wakes up early in the morning is an early bird. Or in some places they call it a lark. People who stay up late and wake up late, we call them night owls. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Hey guys, today I want to tell you about sleep. Specifically about the verb to oversleep. Now, you might know this verb, might not, has two different meanings. First of all, oversleep could be when you sleep too long or you don't wake up early enough. Like, you need to go to work at 8, but you sleep till 8.30. We can say, I overslept. But oversleep also has a second meaning. It can mean that you sleep too much and you feel bad in the morning. Have you ever overslept? For example, if you sleep 12 hours, then you wake up and you feel like a zombie. You can say, I overslept last night. Hey guys, I usually shoot my videos in the morning, but today I decided to shoot one in the evening because I want to teach you a new word. And this word is not an English word, it's an Italian word, and it's Ferrari. Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you about eggs. First, there's three parts of the eggs, the egg shell, the egg white, and the yellow part is called the yolk. And to help me today, I have a couple helpers. Hi, I'm going to talk about two ways to make eggs. One is sunny side up where you put the egg in carefully and you don't break the yolk and let it sit for a few seconds and then you can serve it. And the second way is scrambled where when you break the egg in the pan, you mix it all together, break the yolk, scramble it, and just let it cook for a little bit. Hi, I'm going to tell you about over easy eggs. Over easy eggs, um, you uh, break, the, break the shell and you put it in the pan and you just let it cook and then you flip it so the other side cooks too. Um, and the other type of egg is the hard boiled egg. That egg, you put the whole egg with the shell on it in boiling water and you let it boil for about 10 minutes and then you have a hard boiled egg. Great guys, so now you can go make yourself some different types of eggs. Hey guys, our community has really, really grown a lot. We're up to 270 subscribers here on the Telegram channel and a lot more on the YouTube channel. So what I'm gonna do is, for all of you guys who are here on Telegram, I'm gonna give you something really special when we hit that 500 number. So when we have 500 members of this Telegram group, you're gonna get a big surprise. And yeah, I can't really say more about that right now, but I'm sure you're gonna love it. So make sure you tell your friends and tell people who are learning English to join this Telegram channel. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the fact that you're here with me already, and I really hope that these videos help you. So yeah, go get some more people to join this group, and there will be a big surprise at 500. Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you about to be plus an adjective and to get plus an adjective. So for example, to be tired and to get tired. Well, what's the difference? To be tired describes one situation or one state. So we can say right now, I am tired, or right now, I am not tired. There are just two sides. We can be this thing or not. But when we use to get plus an adjective, this talks about changing this state. So we can say, I wasn't tired, but I got tired. So now I'm tired. Or we can say, I'm getting tired. See, it's about a change or a process where be plus an adjective is about a state. 
Hey guys, today I want to share a funny phrase with you from English. Uh, this phrase is an idiom, it's a special phrase that we say in a special situation. So when someone asks us a question like, will you do this or will this happen? And you want to say that that's crazy and that will never happen. You can say, yeah, when pigs fly. So the phrase, when pigs fly, you know, pigs don't fly. So this phrase we use to say that this is a crazy idea and it will never happen.